do? The whole situation is so confusing. I do have some thoughts. Good plan. Impossible things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happened than we do. <laughs> Thanks, Navia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you. Thank you, gorgeous thighs. <clears throat> Ah, oh, finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? To be honest, you might be disappointed. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It ain't looking good. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well, now, don't you all look disappointed? Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. <laughs> I love the arrogance looting of her. Like, I never understood people's hate or dislike for arrogant characters. It's especially in fictional works. It's like, it's better in fictional works than in real life. You feel me? That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. That's not true. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. Just you wait. Watch, I'm gonna pull your little father over here and slap you across the face. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Oh, shit. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Oh, I better pit on the, um, the fast report thing. Um. Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? I'm curious to know how she's gonna refute it. Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Lenny is clearly lying. She does have a robotic eye. She has an artificial eye in her socket. You see the gold lining she has around her, her left eye? There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. I'm curious to know how she's going to prove that. Also, not in her eye, but it's around her iris, around the center of her eye. You see the gold lining? is weird. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? Mm. The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. How could Lenny not know about that sound? True. The sound was loud. There's no way he didn't hear that sound. Especially if he was running underneath underground to get to the other side. Unless he ran to that other side of the box already there. He was already there on the other side of the box. At the other box at the other end. While the other girl was moving her way towards him. And they just ran past each other. He went upstairs. Went inside the box. Waited for his turn. And then blase blase. Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I definitely heard the thud. The guilty. Look at those scales. Could those mean 
represent the stand on trial. <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. You gotta respect it. She said, "My, my, me gassing myself up is not founded on thin air. It's founded on bedrock, nigga." <laughs> Tell me. Aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? Oh shit, isn't that the House of Hearth from like the Fatui shit? The House of the Hearth? They're Fatui niggas. Let's get it. No wonder they did something like this. The Fatui, you the scum. Serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. Is generating energy. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My, oh my, don't they look <laughs> flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. I fuck with this person, her personality, bro. I'm sorry, I just love arrogant ass niggas. <sighs> Good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. Oh, damn. So she actually put work into pitting part of her evidence. Hmm. W. Archon. Hey, Winnie. Why didn't you tell us this before? Our Fatui niggas. Hmm. But we friends with child, order, so it shouldn't be a problem. Order. Mr. Linney, allow me to reestablish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the opera house, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? <sighs> There's no doubt by the magician's ability to con others, given how Lynn can see his identity this all could be a setup beforehand. Plus child is here in Fontaine along with other house operatives. There must be some scheme at work here. I've been a victim of such schemes before, and now? Please answer my question, Mr. Linney. Traveler, please open your mouth. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. This is not looking good for him. I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. Damn! Oh, y'all niggas for two? You wrap these niggas up. Pack them up. <laughs> what should we do now? Permission to speak, your honor. Granted. My client has withheld some key information. My defense cannot proceed. In that case, what is your request? I request a brief adjournment. Ad uh, adjournment. There are things that I must that must be discussed. Damn, I can't pronounce for sure. Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. Shut your ass up. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Yeah, shut your ass up. Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. Yeah, adjourn me. This That's trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Lenny's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. Yeah. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> I 
I swear, Farina cooking us up right now. Give me backstage and not Ross. All right, you better get to spilling the beans. Open y'all lips. Well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. You better get to talking. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. Ugh. Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. You know, this is kind of weird that they're acting like this because we've come across with Tui who wanted to leave the organization. I remember that world quest that I did in Sumeru where there was this, this, this group of, uh, this couple, these two, the two members that wanted to leave. One of them got badly injured, but she ended up escaping and she just disappeared. Or she, I think she ended up dying or some crap like that. And the home, homeboy just dipped out. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! Then shut up in the I'm corner. I'm very sorry. I know you're angry and reasonably so, but please let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people, as many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. But how can we know that this isn't all just another lie? Right. So you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that! Explain the other issue first. Where did you actually go while the trick was being performed? Right. Let's hear your answer first, and no lies now. Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. And why did, did... And what did you find? Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, Is that explains why you didn't hear the thud. But why do you want to understand how the Orca Trace operates? Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. 
I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. Oh, I thought they were going to give us a choice. I believe in the facts. I will defend you from the, those charges. I believe that judgment will be dispensed as... I will defend you from the charges, from these charges. I believe that judgment will be dispensed as it should. Oh, so we are given a choice. I'm going to believe these niggas. Okay, thank you. I wonder what would happen if I chose I wouldn't believe this nigga. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're going to need a seriously watertight defense. We already have the key evidence we need. Huh? Almost over. Let's go back. Hmm. Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean. I wonder who did he hear down there and the voice was familiar to him and tried to call out and called out to him but he did not respond and left so it had to be either child no it couldn't be child no it had to be either child no child was out for no that was a day ago so it had to be the child either child or it had to have been Alakina. but it never specified if the voice was a feminine voice or a masculine voice Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Now then, if everyone would lend me their attention... At this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linny's perspective. I'm loving this angle stuff they got going on. Ooh, what's this? Based on the position of events, you can identify plot loopholes in their statements. Use evidence and clues obtained during the investigation to refute any erosions, assertions of fact, erroneous assertions of fact, and replace them with new inferences. If you refute to convince the evidence, convince the audience and obtain more support from the people the options will display such shifts clearly hmm. if you find and review all incorrect content you can complete the cycle and unveil the truth oh boy as the countdown began he entered the tunnel When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands before operating the devices such that Cal's death would be ruled an accident. All right. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. All right, time to destroy these facts. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the events? Very much. The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events, what Linny experienced and what he saw. Hmm. 
was identified as loopholes. Lenny claims that he headed to the chamber containing the core upon entering the tunnel and he did not witness the crime taking and did not witness the crime taking place and thus did not hear the thud. Okay. Did our breath. No one left the arrest during the measure. Okay, that's not useful. Lenny claims to have heard a mysterious voice within the chamber that the house that house is within house on the ground. Okay. The young lady's clothes. Okay. The only thing right now is is, that is this, but um, Let's see. Hmm. Seems this won't produce a particularly effective rebuttal. Hmm. Seems this. Okay. Seems this won't produce a part. Hmm. Hmm. Seems. Hmm. Seems this won't produce a particular. Okay, this is a problem. Okay, okay. So this is when he said he attacked her. Claims that her nothing. Okay. According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. Hmm. Linny was not on. Did her Hmm, okay. Linny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. Linny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Ahem! <clears throat> Attention! Ace Detective Paimon has something to say! When the countdown started, Linny did indeed go into the tunnel. But he immediately used a vent to access the Opera House basement, which is where the underground core of the Oratrice is stored. Once he reached that area, he heard a voice in what should have been an empty room. Since he felt something was amiss, he returned immediately. The crime scene had already developed by the time he reached the tunnel again. And in order to complete the magic trick, he did not remain there for any length of time. Finally, he reached the surface, and that was when the accident happened from his point of view. Therefore, he's innocent! Let's get in. That's perfect. words you believe that he knew nothing of the incident that's right moreover i believe my opposition's reasoning is flawed <laughs> my reasoning the onstage equipment was clearly tampered with in a premeditated fashion however you say that Carly bumped into Lenny by chance 
panel, who was the entire setup meant to kill? Assuming that what you say is true, Linny only needed to kidnap the young girl to cause a new disappearance case. What would the point of killing someone on stage be? Ooh, new info. of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well, your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? Do you remember? Do you happen to remember how you refuted Lenny's alibi initially? Initially? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't? Your claim has now become my weapon. Your claim has now become a critical clue. to give this more thought. Paimon thinks there's something off here. Hmm. logic well then if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes then who was it the murderer was huh uh, that can't be right are you serious Let's hear your reasoning then. What I must do next is recreate the truth. What Cowell did, and how he went from would be perpetrator to victim. Leaving us, saw how he died. Call you how Artemis committed the crime at his disposal. The strange noise could. The sound coming and struggling. When it was in the tunnel right for one minute, this would have given time for to bring her out of the magic box and the audience. According to the tunnel, no one entered. So even if he had taken her, there would be no means of exiting. Exiting the box would be in full view of the audience, pretty much guaranteed they would be discovered. What's wrong, Traveler? Are you still having trouble figuring things out? Where in the world did his go? <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. And here I thought you had something to show for it. But it seems you're still far from the truth. Look, since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. She's inside the box. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. 
But it's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. Just give me from the water tank. Wait, could it, could it have been the water? <laughs> Excuse my interruption, dear opponents. But do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? There is no greater sin in this opera house than an awkward delay in the performance. If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Hold on a second. Oh, I don't get it! It all comes together if Halsey disappeared instead of being kidnapped! Lynette escaped from the water tank, vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... <laughs> oh, just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. How could a person ever be transformed into water? This is reality we're talking about here, not some magic trick. I find it crazy these people who can manipulate the elements and use magic and all this other crap cannot believe someone has the ability to turn another person into water. Excuse you? You're the god of water here. What are you talking about? Must we really? I should think that of anyone. Your friend Linny already knows this truth very well. Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. We're talking about two completely different things. Even so, I trust the Traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps some new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? <sighs> People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. I love how he's in. Guards, please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased, Callor. We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post-haste. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are... water from the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea? The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. You've got to be kidding! People dissolving into water? Could something so ridiculous actually be true? Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy, but... It's just a coincidence, isn't it? Huh. If people can become water, does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowell was targeting that girl... Wait just a minute. Could that mean... You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? 
wait a minute is that why the rain the whole thing about it raining it seems so freaking weird in Fontaine with the weather are they using a weather machine to make it rain just dissolving water let's go just trust me order order <laughs> it is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results but we cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues still let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic Albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! one didn't make sense at all. Hmm. Let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. I'm interested in this. Water from the primordial sea. Ahem. <clears throat> it's Ace Detective Paimon's time to shine again! In the original plan, Cowell would tamper with the water tank rope and the number selector securing his target. When the magic box containing Halsey was lowered, the metal hook would retract gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. When the balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial seed inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowell would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel, with the remaining evidence being covered up by the water tank on stage. But he encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same water tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. Huh, that does make sense. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. <sighs> oh dear, what do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? <sighs> what a humiliation. Just own up to it, stupid. Now, it seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Don't let it be who I think it is. Who is it? Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case. And we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? That can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. <laughs> Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, Allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Oh boy. Linny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Having made modifications to the props beforehand, his accomplice Cowell then caused Halsey to vanish using the water from the primordial sea. But upon his return, in cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away with his partner in crime. Ultimately, he knocked Cowell out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became a murder weapon. Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclusion, 
It does seem that the famed Fatui is quite the cold-blooded and ruthless organization. Am I right, Mr. Linny? We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here. Is this the end of the road? Oh no! Mm, Paimon can't think of anything either! It doesn't look like there's any way around this! Uh, seems using the water as new evidence was too good a move! I think we've all seen enough now, and we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. I believe this is indeed the finale! Now then, my good, noble Chief Justice, should we not, in your view, move... Huh? Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject! Miss, I must ask you not to shout and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on. Don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick. One that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linny, if you would be so kind. What? What in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Linny and Lynette. Give it another go. Don't worry. Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. But as the magic makers and stars of the show, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. Voila! Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So, the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me, and then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowl. I admit it. What? What? Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian, and I'm originally from Mondstadt. I heard that Linny's show was gonna be a real thriller, but I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there, and I'd never been caught before. I knew she looked familiar. I knew this was the chick who was stealing in the beginning of the quest. In the beginning of the Archon quest. I was like, she looks so freaking familiar. Didn't we just see her not that long ago? I knew it. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Lenny was the one who caught me in the act. Hey, no wonder you look familiar. So you were the thief. Lenny even mentioned that you were pretty skilled. Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. 
I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee, but then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nap me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. <sighs> there was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? Is there practically handed at concealment, probably. But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? Now it's time for the refuge. It's time for uh, it's time to refute the Hydro Archon's previous reasoning. This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillian's perspective. Hmm. Oh. Oh, so the beginning can't be touched, but the next scene can. The strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lillianne's attempt to break out when she was frightened. The flower vase was not broken to cover anything up, but it was smashed during the struggle between Lillianne and Cowell. Lillianne was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid, biding her time. Just what one might expect of an experienced thief. And it's Ace Detective Paimon time! Having been selected out of the blue, Lillianne panicked. Her panic only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all heard. Hearing the commotion, Cowell leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillian had not dissolved. He did not know that Lillian was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who made her way in by stealing a ticket. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillianne back into the box. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillianne came out on top, knocking Cowell out and putting him in the box. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. And we got it. Let's get it. She knew that she would have to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days. She had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our noses. Talk about a sneaky thief. At this point, all the events that happened in the tunnel have now come to light. Eat it. Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo! Bravo! Let's get it. Now then, Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? Um... Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have concluded. <laughs> she had like somewhat of a child. She tried to walk out. She was like, oh, I gotta get out of here. You're like, get your ass back here and fucking finish your job, bitch.
<laughs> I just work too hard to be Chief Justice. You the god around here. You better do your damn job. What? Are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no. I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow. Look at that. She's like a deflated balloon now. If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine, and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box, and thus became his own final victim. Lillianne, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the Opera House. As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the Opera House, and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. But however, he is not innocent of the fact of looking trying to reach the basement of the core that operate that powers this entire function of this whole building the device in this building so he's going to be charged for that Hooray, watch they better hit him with a twist while there is much in Linny and lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately this case at least can be handed over to the oratrice to make the final decision Oh, snap. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. <laughs> Victory for Ace Detective Kaiba! Great work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Let's not celebrate just yet. Next, I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the Primordial Sea in Linny's baggage? Uh, right! Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know! Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? He's work he was working alongside Cal. He was the he was the um other dude he was working with. I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes. I uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. I I was just following orders. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-up said this was the best opportunity to do so. Who? And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know, and seek the protection of the guards. 
yes. I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which, when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now, and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about. The... Oh, shit. <gasps> what? He turned into water. And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. <sighs> Who is this boss? I shouldn't boss? have expected any less of them. An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. Is the Fontaine Chief Justice an elf? <laughs> 